Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion on ordinary differential equations. And ordinary differential equation, when it comes to solving them, means if I have a derivative, or if I know how a function is changing, and I have an initial condition of that function, I can trace out that original function. And we did this very, very simply using uh, Euler's method. And Euler's method is just merely linear extrapolation. And the technique went like this. If I have this initial condition, which is, say, for the for this lesson is y of 0 at 2, and I have its derivative, I can use this information to linearly extrapolate what the next point is, and then take the information of the next point to linearly extrapolate the point after that, then the point after that, and so on. And this is how I trace the function. So this is how we solve that ordinary differential equation. This is how I use the derivative and the initial condition to trace out the original function. So this was the purpose of the last lesson. But also in the last lesson towards the end, we talked about the derivative that is used in, in the Euler, that the Euler uses the derivative at the beginning of the interval. And that can be a big uh, problem. Why? Because say if your interval uh, uh, doesn't have a lot of slope changes, if we took the um, the derivative at the starting point as the representative derivative of that interval, there is no problem because there's not a lot of slope changes within that interval. But if your interval has a lot of slope changes, uh, making the derivative at the starting point the representative of that interval is a big source of error. So in this lesson, we're going to go through improvements of Euler's method, or more specifically, on the improvements of the um, estimation of the derivative. What derivative do you use as a representative of each, uh, of the derivative of each one of the intervals that we're going to be dealing with? And the intervals that we're going to be dealing with are these intervals, right? So if I'm taking, if I'm using this point to get this point, what derivative am I going to use to represent this interval? If I'm going to get this point to this point, what interval am I going to use to represent this interval, right? So one way to do it, instead instead of using the derivative at the starting, uh, start of the interval, what I can use is I can uh, uh, use an average. So I can get the derivative at the uh, starting point, the derivative at the end point of the interval, and get an average of that, and that's called Hund's method. So that's one way we're going to do it. Another way is get uh, to use the uh, derivative at the midpoint as the representative derivative of the interval. Another way we can do it is we can use this weighted average. So we can do we can say that uh, I'm gonna use the derivative at the start of the interval and I'm gonna give it a weight of one third, and the derivative at three quarters of the interval and I'm gonna give it a weight of two thirds. So what this really is saying is that the derivative of the interval is gonna have seventy five percent of the behavior of the derivative of the three quarters and thirty percent uh, of the derivative at the start of the interval. So that's what how the weighted average would work. So in this lesson, we're going to uh, apply this to this function dy dx sine of t squared times y. And you can see here, um, the difference between this one and the one that we dealt before is this one is not only defined in terms of y, it's also defined in terms of the independent uh, variable t. The initial condition here is y of 0 is equal to 2. And here is the exact solution that we're after. So I actually graphed it here. Uh, here are the numbers. And actually, this is the function that I'm trying to trace out using those four methods, numerically, that is. Um, I'm going to do this at a step size of 0.5. Uh, so the step size is not going to change in this lesson. And I'm going to compare for the same step size which one performs the best, the Euler, the Hans, the midpoint, or, or the Ralston. Okay, so let's actually go ahead. I already uh, produced the code for all four of them. It's a very, very simple code. So I'm going to go through and explain uh, in detail each one of them. So uh, as you remember, with the code, we had three parts. The first part is setting the integration limits. Uh, my initial point is at zero, t equals zero. And my final one, I'm going to trace it out till five. Um, and this is my the step size I'm going to be using, 0.5. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to calculate the number of calculations that I'm going to be doing. And this is analogous to the number of loops that I'll be making. So 5 minus 0 divided by uh, 0.5. Okay, so this is going to be our n. Uh, then with Euler, if you remember, it's just a sum code, right? y is equal to y plus dy dt. Uh, ty, you can see that um, our derivative is now a function of both t and y multiplied by h. 
Uh, and this doesn't for ease. I actually just coded the function up here so I can just call it by dy dt instead of just writing this out over and over again. Um, so another change is that here, uh, because in the last lesson we dealt with only in, uh, initial, initializing the uh, dependent variable y, I also need to initialize this at t because the derivative also depends on it. And also I have to up the t by the step size for every single iteration. Um, so let's actually go ahead and run the code. I associated this code with uh, this column and rows here. Uh, so if I run uh, this code, let me actually comment this out so I don't get the Hans method just yet. Um, all right, perfect. So here, here we have the line for uh, the Euler. You can see that it, it captured the trend of the line, but you can see with all that space in between, there's a lot of error, right? So let's actually take a y of 5 as the representation of our error. So y of 5 here for the approximation was 15.36. For the true is 27.91. That brings us to about 45% error for y of 5. And you can also calculate the errors for the others, but I'm going to take this point as the representative of how well the um, uh, the technique is doing. Now with Hans, it's just very simple. We're just going to take the average of the uh, uh, the average between the derivative at the start of the interval and derivative at the end of the interval. But we actually have a dilemma here because I only know the derivative at the uh, start of the interval, and the reason that is is because I know the y at the the start of the interval is it's a, my initial condition, but I don't know the y at the end of the interval, which means that's the first thing I need to get and. Hans method actually includes Euler's method. So I'm going to use Euler to get what y e is, the uh, y at the end of the interval. So I'm going to use the derivative at the start, the uh, starting point to get the y. So this is what we usually do with Euler. But we're now going to go a step further. We're going to use this uh, y e, this y, and we're going to get the derivative at this y at the end of the interval. And make sure when you're uh, evaluating the dy dt is t plus the step size. So that's the t for that. In other words, if t here we started to be 0, it's going to be plus 0.5. Uh, that's going to be the location of y, y e. Given that I have the derivative at the end of the interval, and I have here the derivative at the start of the interval, now I can get an average, and I'm going to call this slope, and now I can actually get what my y is. So y is equal to y plus the slope, which is the average now, multiplied by h. And this is just a code to display it um, here. Uh, and of course, much with the Euler, since we're dealing with the independent variable here, uh, t, I have to up the t by h, by every step size for every um, iteration. So actually, let's run the code and see how this is going to actually perform. Uh, all right, excellent. You can see massive amount of improvement. Uh, almost actually here is complete, almost superimposed on the true one. There's a little bit, bit, a little bit of error here, very, very close here, and it just diverges slightly here. So very, very sim, very, very similar. Oh, sorry, very, uh, a lot of improvement and very similar to the true value. Uh, so let's actually take the value at y of 5 as our representative of the, of the error. We have this as 25.65 and the true is 27.91. That's an 8% um, error. So we went from 45% 45, 45 error using the Euler to 8% error using the Hans method just by using another average for... Um, Oh, sorry, another estimation for the derivative. And you can see the uh, the error that we were incurring by using the derivative at the start of the interval. So let's actually go ahead and see if I get the, uh, der if I use the derivative at the midpoint, is that, if that's going to make any difference. So I'm going to uncomment that. So the code is very similar. Again, we at the same dilemma. We don't know what the y is at the uh, midpoint of the interval. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the y at the midpoint first using Euler, uh, as you see here. Then I'm going to calculate what the derivative is at the midpoint. And I'm going to use the y at the midpoint that I got here. And also make sure that t is plus h divided by uh, 2. So to get the t coordinates for that midpoint, um, uh, the, the t for the midpoint, or the sorry, the time for the midpoint. Uh, given that I have the derivative at the midpoint, 
I can go ahead and do my calculations. Y is equal to Y plus, now the derivative of the midpoint, uh, multiplied by the step size. And this is, again, we're displaying it um, here. And we're upping the, the time with H. So very, very similar to uh, the Huns. The only difference, instead of getting uh, the derivative at the endpoint and making an average, I'm getting the derivative, um, sorry, getting, uh, uh, getting the derivative here at the endpoint and getting the average, here getting the derivative at the midpoint and using this um, as the representative for the interval. So actually, let's go ahead and run this and see if it's going to be any improvement. All right, Garrett, great. Actually, you, you, very much, much better. Much, much better, actually. Uh, you can see we went down to 7.73%. Not as drastic as an improvement between the Euler and the Hans, but definitely the best thus far. Um, so let's actually go ahead in the Ralston. Very similar code as well. Um, let me uncomment that. Uh, so you can see from uh, those derivatives, the one that I don't have is the one at the three quarters. So this is what I'm going to be doing first. So I'm going to use Euler to get what is my y at three quarters of the interval. Given that I have my y, I can go ahead and get my derivative at uh, this three quarters and make sure that you have the associated T, the correct T. Um, and then I'll get the slope based on this weighted average. One third for dy dt1, which is the start of the interval, and uh, two thirds of dy dt three fourths. And after I calculate my slope, I go with y is equal to y plus the slope times h, and the rest is the same. So let's actually run this and see if we're going to have any improvement. All right, great. Actually, not that drastic of an improvement, but definitely an improvement thus far. So this is by far the most superior. Uh, went from 7.73% to 7.4%. So these are very, very close to one another, but comparative to the Euler, massive improvement, right? So actually, let's uh, recap what we learned in this lesson. So in this lesson, we uh, reviewed what what is meant by solving an ordinary differential equation. If I know the derivative of a function, other, in other words, if I know how a function is changing and also have an initial condition, that is enough information to trace out the uh, the function. We had the original function that we're trying to trace out. The exact solution is this function that we have here, and it was the orange line. Uh, Euler, we discussed that one of the downfalls of the Euler, Euler is the um, the derivative it uses. It always uses the derivative at the start of the interval. So we said, okay, because we incur a lot of error with that, we're going to approximate it a lot better. With Hans' method, it used the average between uh, the start of the interval and the end of the interval derivatives. Uh, then the midpoint method kind of comes from its name, and the Ralston is a um, weighted average that gives one-third to the uh, derivative at the start of the interval, and two-thirds to the three-quarters of the interval. We found with the Hans, it was a massive improvement over the Euler when the, the error at uh, y of 5 went down to 8.10% from 45%. But when we did the midpoint and the Ralston, despite the fact that there um an improvement on Hans, there were not that much drastic improvement as between the Euler and the Hans. But definitely up to this point, the Hans is the most accurate that we have uh, so far. In terms of the code, we found that when it comes to enacting whether the Hans, the midpoint, or the Ralston, we're going to actually uh, uh, take advantage of the Euler. So they have the Euler method embedded in them. And with the, Hals, with the Hans, I have to use the Euler first to get what is my y at the endpoint, and use that y to get the derivative there. Uh, and after I have the derivative at the endpoint and the start point, and now I can get my average. And with my average, I can get a approximation for the y now. With the midpoint, again, going to use the Euler to get the y at the midpoint, then get the derivative at the midpoint, use that in my approximation. And with the Ralston, again, use the Euler to get the y at the three quarters of the interval, get the derivative there, do this special weighted average, and get what my y is. Okay, uh, so that's, that really marks the end of this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to go through uh, another improvement. Uh, and we're going to go through a class of equations called the Ronge Cuda uh, techniques. And those are actually all Ronge Cuda techniques. So we're going to actually generalize a lot of the techniques that we uh, dealt with thus far. Uh, so that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.